Adam Dora, in the build-up to COP26, we're hearing a lot of concern and pessimism about the climate. Uh, you've got a very different take, though. I do. Our research shows that there has never been a greater cause or time to be optimistic about the future of climate change. And the reason why is because we are at a turning point in history. Three of the foundational sectors of the global economy, energy, transportation, and food, are all poised for disruption. And those three sectors comprise almost 90% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And disruption of those sectors will change everything. So how will that happen? Well, disruptions are when new technologies emerge that outperform and outcompete older ones, transforming an industry or a sector of the economy as a result. And they do so very quickly. We use horses for transportation for thousands of years, for example. But a century ago, they were disrupted by cars in just 15 years. And this is going to happen to us again over the next 15 years, not just in transportation, but in energy, transportation and food. And this is going to be transformative. And it, of course, has tremendous impacts and tremendous implications for how we can solve climate change. You're talking presumably about driverless cars, for example, um, maybe meat grown in labs. Uh, some of that will take some amount of persuasion for the public to accept them. Well, that's true. and. Again, we can look to history and see what are the examples? What can we learn from previous instances of disruption? We may remember, for example, thinking, oh, I will never buy anything on the internet. Who would be crazy enough to buy something on their smartphone? And yet it does not take very long for new technologies to not only become adopted, but to just feel normal and commonplace uh, for us. And so this transition period will not take an entire generation or decades. It will happen very quickly in a matter of just a few years. So how green are these new technologies? They are tremendously, tremendously green. And they're also green in the financial sense. This is extremely important. Disruptions happen because the new technologies are so much cheaper. That is the crucial driving force. But of course, we are very lucky in this instance because all of the technologies involved, so we're talking about solar power, wind power, and batteries in the energy sector. We're talking about electric vehicles, self-driving and ride-sharing in the transportation sector. And we're talking about precision fermentation and cellular agriculture in the food sector. All eight of those key technologies are clean technologies. But they are, like all other disruptions before them, first and foremost, economically driven. They are driven by economic and market forces. And so we now have a tailwind. We have economic forces working for us because each of these technologies is at the tipping point where they will start to become overwhelmingly competitive compared to the older technologies. Isn't this just science fiction, really? Well, it's easy to think that we must have science fiction breakthroughs to solve climate change. This is a common misconception. The truth is that we don't need nuclear fusion or warp drive or other science fiction technologies. We already have the better tools that we need to tackle this problem. But there will be a human cost to that in terms of jobs, particularly when you think of jobs in the oil and gas sector, when you think of uh, people who, do, who drive for a living. This is an extremely important concern. And what we need to do is make sure, we need to do three things. We need to make sure that we are prepared so that these, these disruptions do not catch us by surprise. They are unintuitive. They tend to happen faster than we expect because of rightful skepticism in the early stages. So we must be prepared. The second thing we must do is ensure that we protect people not industries. And this, is a, this becomes a collective responsibility, not just an individual responsibility for each of us, but a responsibility that we all share collectively through our governments to ensure that we protect the people and not the industries that are affected. And the third thing to keep in mind is that like disruptions before them throughout history, these will wipe out the older industries, but the new growth that they create and the new industries and the prosperity built on those new opportunities will vastly outweigh the loss from the older 
uh, industries and the older technologies. And so we need to be prepared for all of that complexity as it emerges. Finally, and very briefly, if you will, um, will any of this feature in COP26? That is an, an extraordinarily important and good question. My hope is that it will. Technology, now that we have in our hands, that will be deployed over the next 10 to 15 years is going to exert an enormous force in shaping our societies and in shaping how we deal with climate change, and it must be part of the conversation. Adam Dole, thanks for joining us in Scotland tonight. Always a pleasure. Thank you.